Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Tonight's gonna be something a little different. We're supposed to have a full moon. So I thought I'd come over here to Caribou National Forest, maybe do a little night skiing. And I'm also gonna spend the night. So come along with me today and enjoy. The snow is pretty typical to lower elevations, and the south-facing slopes have a little bit of crust on them, but it should get better as we go up. The sun has just dropped below the ridge, and I've gained about 1,000 feet above the valley floor. As many times as I've skied this mountain, I've never been up here at night, and I've always wondered what the valley looks like after dark. There's also a full moon, and I hope I can get some amazing photos as well. As we go up in elevation, snow is definitely getting a little softer. It was pretty crusty down below, but uh, we're going to have to find a place to set up the tent probably within the next 15 or 20 minutes. Hopefully we'll get a good view. There is a bit of wind, so I've picked a spot below the ridge for my shelter. It's on a slope, but it will be easy to cut a shelf for the tent, which will give me some additional wind protection. I've decided to use my Big Agnes UL2 Rainfly and Ground Sheet. This setup is a couple of pounds lighter than my tried and true winter light tent and is also freestanding. It seemed like a good idea at home, but it just was much more difficult and time consuming to set up and I just couldn't place it on top of the snow like I had planned. I had to guy it out and pile snow around it due to the wind. It was also more difficult to get the rain fly over the pole structure in the wind by myself and it dawned on me what an asset a second set of hands are under this situation. In the end, I think it would have been easier to set up the MSR front range tarp that I featured in last week's video. Well, good morning, everybody. Well, I spent the night in a brand new bag I just bought. It's the Western Mountaineering Puma. It's a minus 25 degree down bag. And it is a real fluffy bag. It was supposed to get down to around 10 degrees, and I just have kind of a funky wonky thermometer. It may be five degrees night right now, but it feels pretty cold. I've really been shocked over the last decade about how much harder it is for me to keep warm now that I'm older. Um, and even though this bag is rated to minus 25 and, and probably a young person would be comfortable with that, uh, I, I was certainly a lot more comfortable in this bag than I was in the Mountain Hardware Lavina bag. I was, uh, I was comfortable, but I was not hot. This has been sitting out all night. Let's see if it'll fire up. Well, it's cold enough this one won't fire up. And here's the GoPro. It has the Enduro battery. Let's see what happens here. It starts up, but whoop. yeah, yesterday when I was uh, shooting some video just in the afternoon, it said it was too cold. It says it was out of battery, but it shows 38%. And then uh, once it gets cold, I tried charging it with an external pack and it still wouldn't charge. It'll probably shut down here in just a minute. Yeah, powering off. Yeah, electronics and coal, they just don't seem to work very well together. Doctored up hot chocolate this morning. Well, I'm all done with breakfast and it's time to pack up this camp. It's amazing, boy, that sun feels wonderful this morning. And I'm, I have my tent pointed east, so the sun is just coming in here right now. And even though it's reasonably cold outside, I've got a little microclimate. It's just absolutely wonderful. After my little experience with a little bit of wind in this yesterday, uh, <laughs> I wish I would have had my, my old-fashioned winter light. That tent is just so much easier to put up in a storm. I think it'd be almost impossible to put this up if you had super strong winds with one person. You know, it's, it's just, everything is just complicated in the wintertime. It's, you know, your hands get cold. Um, you can't really move around the tent so easily because of the deep snow. Um, just, uh, it's just not for me. 
This will be the last time I'll use this combination for sure. Now, if I had any intentions of reliving my youth, going up to extreme altitude and uh, being on exposed ridges and with strong winds where <laughs> things can get critical really quick, a tent set up like this would be a disaster. Um, my winter light, I've done it and it works pretty well. But I really think the ticket for that type of adventure are the Black Diamond single wall winter tents. Uh, they have a series of them and, and they have internal poles and they're a freestanding tent. And with that kind of design, you can quite quickly stomp out an area. You can throw your gear inside the tent before you even set it up. And then you can quickly put the poles in and you're, you're good to go. And uh, it took me a long time to get mine up yesterday. And uh, I just, I did not like that. I didn't like the feeling of not being able to have shelter within just a matter of 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and uh, there was no way that this thing was going to go up in 10 or 15 minutes. But I, while I've got the 360 out, I'll extend the pole here and give you a little look around.
Well, hi guys and gals. <laughs> Welcome to April. You look like you've had about enough of winter. Well, thanks for coming along with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and be sure to enjoy the moonlight.